But to look your enemy in the eye, knowing you'll remember his face for the rest of your life. Now that takes a stomach much stronger than you'll ever have. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode seven. I think we're on episode seven of Knights of the Old Republic 2 with a Sith, Re Sith Lord Restored Content mod applied. Oh, good lord, I can't speak this morning. Magnificent stuff. It's always good when you can't speak, isn't it? Right, should we just level up our man here? Or what could we do with some more of? Always more wisdom. And naturally, more persuade. A little more repair skill. Some treat injury. And one of those. That'll look. Ooh, more powers. I like more powers. But what can we do, ladies and gentlemen? That is the question. What have we got here? Now, we've got the Drain Force. I do want to get more of that later on. A mind trick? No, not interesting. I, I really want Drain Life, but I've got to wait till level 9 for that. I think we might just have to go for the old classic. Oh, hello. This power enables the character to use their own health to fuel force powers. Okay, we've got Battle Meditation. This power grants uh, plus two to attack rolls, plus two to damage, and plus two to will saves to all party members. Useful. Force Barrier there. The effect lasts for 30 seconds. Energy Resistance. Force Valor. Hmm. Force Aura. I think I'm actually going to go for the Battle Meditation skill. And there's a reason I'm going to go for that. Um, basically, we're going to get to a point a little bit later on uh, where we have to fight someone uh, physically. And I think I may be able to use a bit of an exploit to basically become a more effective fighter. Let's just have a quick look around the ship. Uh, I have got this vague memory that there is a... Secret storage locker right here. Oh, we've got a Jedi robe, Pazak cards, computer spikes, Mandalorian melee shield. Oh, we've got it all. <clears throat> I knew it was there. Right, I think before we actually go to Taris, it's Taris. We're going to have a quick chat to Kray and see what she has to say for herself. Have you come for more answers? There is little more left to give. Oh, calm yourself, Kray. <clears throat> if you refer to your hand, the choice was yours. That's entirely true. We could have run. Of course it was. I knew what was necessary, and that I was the only one who stood between you and him. This wound is a physical thing and will fade with time. It was necessary. Some things may only be learned from sacrifice. Interesting. Then consider the pain a lesson. Oh, that's just cruel. I'm going to say it, ladies and gentlemen. I do not need your condescension nor your lectures. If anyone needs training and guidance, it is you. Then teach me to shut out your pain. Next time, it could be worse. I do not know if it is possible. And I fear that had the pain been more intense, the consequences would have been more extreme. Oh dear. What kind of consequences? Death? Would it have been lethal? Yes. Possibly, yes. And I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. No, did? <clears throat> I will not allow my life to be tied to some half-dead, delusional old woman. Then we'll work together and try and be careful until we can fix this. I... That's not the way I roll, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragus. Let's hope so. Does our connection have any advantages? It seems the Force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the Force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. Sounds extremely useful. You and Kray possess the Force Chain special ability. When either of you uses a Force power on yourself, the other gains the benefit as well. Good to know. 
a powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, <coughs> it has its drawbacks. It does indeed. Okay. Can you tell me what has happened since the Mandalorian Wars? This is going to fill us in on a little bit of the background uh, between Kota One and now. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V. Tell me about the Mandalorian Wars. It is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. I see. <clears throat> but only some Jedi Knights answered the call, like I did. But the Jedi Council didn't help. Only a few of the Jedi Knights did. Let's go for that one. Indeed. The Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. And Revan and Malak refused to wait. Two Jedi Knights, Revan and Malak, defied the Jedi Council. They challenged the Mandalorian fierceness and brutality on the battlefield with a viciousness of their own. Revan's entrance into the conflict marked the true beginning and end of the war. It was Revan who drove the Mandalorians back into the unknown regions. Even in the final battle, we almost lost the war. Yet Revan triumphed. But you know this, for you were there at Manacor V, when the Mandalorians were crushed beneath Revan's might. I asked what you know, not what I know. You asked what had happened, and I am telling you. The past <laughs> sent echoes into the future, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Many <clears throat> believed the Mandalorians defeated at Malachor V, but the Mandalorians taught the Jedi much through battle. And so it was that Malak, Revan, and the Jedi that followed them discovered their true natures in the Mandalorian Crusade. But you know this. But some battles must be fought. It was not Revan's failing. Did Revan fail? Or was it the failure of the Jedi teachings? A question for another time, perhaps. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. That's an interesting perspective. Um, <clears throat> there are many different perspectives uh, that we'll be experiencing throughout this. Um, and that's one thing that I really like about the dialogue in this. It, it's kind of... Uh, uh, you see many different viewpoints towards uh, what happened to Malachor V as you go along. Didn't the Jedi Order try to stop them? Revan and Malak and all the Jedi that served them turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic. Wounds that bleed still. The Republic is weak. They couldn't have beaten Malak. Now that's something I agree with. As all Sith do, without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. Did the Jedi recapture Revan? Does Revan still live? Or, but what happened to Revan? I'm interested as to whether she knows if he still lives. Let's try that one. After defeating Malak, Revan left the Republic, and there are none who know where he has gone. It is said that the Sith remnants turned on themselves after Revan defeated Malak, reducing Korriban to ruin as the Republic still bleeds and struggles for life. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. Interesting. <clears throat> so, Revan turned against Malak for the sake of the Republic. Is that what happened? Let's see what her perspective is, ladies and gentlemen. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive. Hmm. 
<laughs> God, Malak and Revan should have crushed the Republic. If the Republic is weak, it didn't deserve to win. And then we must do what we can until it has a chance to recover from the war. Oh, if the Republic is weak, it didn't deserve to win. That's, that's my feeling on it. I hate to say it. Perhaps. It is sometimes difficult to find the truth in the Jedi Civil War. Was it the Republic that defeated Malak, or was it Revan? <coughs> if it was Revan, then the Republic was never truly tested. <laughs> she's got a point that she's trying to make here. Get to the point, if there is one. I'm sure there is. Uh, let's just uh, go her into revealing it without upsetting her. So, what does it matter? A culture's teachings, and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves, or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant <clears throat> beast that labors for breath, and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. That's interesting. <coughs> Perhaps it's better that the Republic stands on its own. Let's, let's try that. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated. Their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat, it is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War, it drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. Oh, that makes me feel so hopeful, ladies and gentlemen. So hopeful. What do you mean? The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground. And if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. Oh, that is magnificent foreshadowing. That is absolutely magnificent. I do love the dialogue in this game. Let's see what, uh, let's see what other questions ask, I can ask. and I will answer. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, she evidently knows something about the Sith that are hunting us. Let's ask These her. These Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. The Sith were once Jedi? Yes. The Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order, following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the Outer Rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the Lords of the Sith, but in their hearts they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it, as Malak did. Interesting. <clears throat> but these Sith seem different. In a manner of speaking, they are different from Malak in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters, all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all, the Jedi are gone. Then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. So, this is all about the Force. <clears throat> I've never seen Sith assassins like those on the Harbing Harbinger. There we go. I'm going to ride for a change. Hey, <laughs> oh, celebration, ladies and gentlemen. I believe them to be the result of special teachings. Their apparent weakness against you is evidence of this. Those Sith assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed 
and grow stronger when they are near force sensitives. The stronger their prey is in the force, the deadlier they become. As long as you were cut off from it, you were able to evade their sight. But after Paragus, I fear that you will be no longer shielded from their eyes or the eyes of their masters. The stronger you grow, the more will come. Okay. Ask, and I will answer. <clears throat> Let's just um, talk about the Force a little bit with her, see if she can help us out. When we were on Paragus, I could feel the Force again. Indeed. And was it the same as before? Oh, no. It was like a whisper at the edge of hearing. If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. The Jedi did this to me? If they were responsible, they had no right... What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? But to cut one off from the Force, it's like losing all your senses at once. Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen, or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before, when Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own, and exiled them as they did you. If the Jedi were already were not already gone and dead, I would end their lives for doing this to me. Yeah, fair enough. It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so, the chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. But the Force, I can feel it again, if only slightly. Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, train you to feel the Force again. And if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you, or undo the damage they have done. I see. I will honor whatever training you wish to give me. It's a very Ducat-esque answer. Claim to honor her, then stab her in the face, ladies and gentlemen. Do not honor me, <coughs> fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Yep. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Okay, I think I'm I done with the conversation. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. <laughs> I'll crack his bulkhead into this, his skull into the bulkhead if he tries. I shall crack his skull into the bulkhead if he tries. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first <coughs> and his allies next. Oh, no. Net dark side shift. Got some influence with Kraya, though. That's good news. Do, 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 do. Hello, damaged HK unit. Let's have a look at him. This looks like the remains of a HK unit, but older and more corroded than the one you encountered on Paragus. Its power, st its power core still carries a charge, but a number of critical parts appear to be missing. Hey, look! Let's diagnose the droid. <laughs> Alright then, T3. It looks as if the droid is missing four critical components. Its droid processor, a replacement droid chassis, the control cluster that's supposed to be stored in the chassis, and its vocabulator. Well, I've got a vocabulator. I'm going to stick into his face. Boom. Success. Okay, we can step away now. Hopefully we're going to find more parts as we go along, and we shall see if we can repair him. Right, uh, let's just make sure T3's all good. If we can find him, he'll be hiding around here somewhere. T3! Hmm. He is hiding somewhere. <coughs> But I'm not just any Cardassian. I will find him. Probably. <laughs> Perhaps not.
There he is. What up? Do you know where that HK droid in the cargo bay came from? <clears throat> oh, you won't tell me. Let's leave that for the time being. I think we need to gain some more influence. You look like you've suffered a lot of damage over the years. How much damage? I think that was shorthand for fucking tons. So you lost a lot of programs in your behavior core in addition to the damage to your frame. No, oh, wizza, wizza, wizza. Well, I'm sure you'll gain that skill back. I'm glad to have you along. I think he said, thanks, brah. Uh, let's see if we can... Oh, we can routine maintain him. Okay. Let me tackle the main chassis first. I should do it. I should make you a little tougher. Well, he sounds pleased, probably. Yeah, due to your repair skills, T3 has gained plus one constitution. Okay, I had other questions for him. Let's see if we can do some more routine maintenance. Oh, we can't for the time being. Okay. Alright, let's leave him be. We got some uh, influence from him, and he gained a little bit of skill. Right, I think what I want to do now, I'm just going to have a quick chat with How's Adam. How's our passenger? She's still aging? <laughs> For someone without much to say, she sure says a lot. Yeah, to you, maybe. I don't usually hear much beyond fool and imbecile. She's lucky she's a Jedi. Or someone would have killed her years ago. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good-looking once. But it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Oh, Hatton, you've been lonely. <laughs> if she looks good to you, you must have taken a blaster hit when I wasn't looking. Hey, I just got out of prison. If we had a decent Navi computer, trust me, we'd be dropping out of hyperspace into the Nar Shaddaa Red Sector right now. After spacing that old witch, of course. <laughs> Are we still on course with Telos? Let's, let's just... Uh, like we have a choice? It's the only place Baragas had logged in their astrogation charts. You know, if you thought Baragas was dead, then Telos is a dying world they're trying to breathe back to life. Should be there before too long. You can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall but Alright, so, I'll do that. So, what happened? To what? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. So where's yours? My lightsaber was taken from me by the Council. Oh, yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you a single hilt or one of those double-bladed Jedi? Oh, single hilt. I'm not posh. Huh. <laughs> Figures. It wasn't red, was it? How dare you ask that? Both the blade and crystal were unique. <laughs> oh, I'm unique? Yeah? Unique how? <clears throat> Orange like a hussock sun. Must have been something. Sure be nice to have it now. Might make those sit think twice before coming after us. I think having it would only drive them to hunt me harder. All right, forget I said anything. Like I said before, you can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. Thanks, brah. All right, let's do that. And we want to go to Telos Citadel Station. Let's do this! We're finally getting somewhere. <clears throat> well, it's pretty cool this place. Finally, some civilization. More people to kill. Magnificent stuff. <clears throat> Let's hope, ladies and gentlemen, that it's full of Bajorans. My workers shall help in aiding me. Attention, 
This is Citadel Station Bay Control, Dock Module 126. Please remain where you are. Lieutenant Dolgren will arrive shortly to meet you. That is okay, all. Okay, then. I don't like the sound of that. If they think we caused the explosion... Uh-oh. Here comes the welcoming party. They may not know what happened, so don't blow it. I'm Lieutenant Gren, Tilo Security Force. I'm under orders to take you into custody in regards to the destruction of the Paragas mining facility. You fucking what, mate? Are you we under arrest? formally charged, but you will be placed under house arrest pending the results of our investigation. Due to the nature of the investigation, I have no specific timetable to offer you. In the meantime, your ship and any droids will have to be given over for safekeeping. Yes, that includes you. You are a droid, so you will be detained. In addition, we will have to take your personal arms and armor until the completion of our inquiry. You what, mate? This is outrageous! You don't have any evidence! You are the only witnesses of the mining facility's destruction. Thus, it is necessary for us to keep you under surveillance until we have a better idea of what happened. I refuse to go along with this. We're leaving. Look around you. Even if you manage to overcome all of us, Bay Control could simply open the MagCon field and shoot you into space. So, let's not do this the hard way. I'll go, but one way or the other, you shall pay me, Goldukat, for the trouble. Given your position, it would be a good idea if you took a more accommodating tone. My men will relieve you of your arms and armor. Follow me. Tell me I'm not going to jail again. I shall relieve him of his head. When I once again gain power, my enemies will be destroyed. Including you. Lieutenant Dolgren. You will be held here briefly. Living quarters are being arranged for you and your companions as we speak. Someone will return shortly to escort you to an apartment in Residential Module 082. Force cage? This is ridiculous. As I said, this is only temporary while other arrangements are made. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to bear with us until then. So be it, but I will remember this. Well, we might be here for a while. Might as well get comfortable. Ugh. Sometimes, Diary, I don't know. Someone is coming. Oh. So this is the last of the Jedi. I must admit I'm a little disappointed. Let me out of this cage, and we'll see how disappointed you are. Doubtful, though at least it appears you have some spirit. <clears throat> the exchange has a bounty on Jedi, you know. You're worth quite a bit of money. The oh, exchange, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure some two-bit pistol jockey like yourself isn't one of them. Hey, I'm more than skilled enough to work for the exchange. You bounty hunters couldn't even win a fair fight. You're the cheapest, most worthless mercenary scum in the galaxy. I'd hire a Mandalorian over your filth in a second. No Mandalorian could match my skills. No Mandalorian could have been clever enough to infiltrate this station, taking the identity of one of the guards, then... Then what? Overloaded our force cage fields and made it look like an accident? You probably don't even have the guts to fight me. <laughs> Pathetic. Don't think overloading your cages had not occurred to me. You're wanted alive, but I doubt anyone will care as long as I bring them your corpse. I see. Let's get this over with. Come, Jedi. It is time to die. Hey, leave him alone. You want to fight? Then try me if you've got the guts. You have goaded me once, and you shall not do so twice. But I shall dispose of all of you eventually. And an old woman, a fool, and a broken Jedi are no match to my skills. <laughs> he gets called a fool a lot, does that? Alright, let's be having him. Uh, first we're going to wound him. Then we're going to shock him. Don't need to drain force. Then we're going to force scream. And then we'll shock him. That looks pretty good. Oh, Batu Ren. The security camera's so and so. What? What's going on here? Man down! Quick! Call a medic! Too All late. Right, Jedi. I want you to back up slowly. Hands in front of you. Into the force cage. Cooperate, and we won't have to gun you down. Come on, Lieutenant. They've already killed. Uh, oh. 
Who is that? Is that Batu Rem? Impressive. You allowed an assassin to infiltrate your ranks. In the Obsidian Order, this would never have happened. Rem's no assassin. Batu Rem is on leave. He shouldn't even be on the station. This man isn't him. I'm glad someone noticed. Only after he tried to kill me. We've arranged for an apartment in Residential Module 082. You'll stay there under house arrest until our investigation <coughs> of the Paragras matter is complete. You'll be under TSF protection. I'll personally clear any visitors to your quarters, and we'll investigate this incident to the best of our ability. To the best of your ability? That's not very inspiring. Oh, oh shrug. Officer, let Lieutenant Yima a report of this incident. She'll look into this. The rest of you come with me. We'll escort you to the apartment in 082 immediately. That's a good idea. I could do with an escort. Seems like there are assassins everywhere trying to kill me. <laughs> Which is most unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. Most unfortunate. These will serve as your quarters for the duration of your house arrest. Two officers will be stationed outside at all times. Again, I'll clear any visitors. There won't be another incident. But just to be on the safe side, why don't you leave us a blaster or two? Get out. Let's go. This isn't good. We've got to get off this station. Let's not discuss this now. We cannot stay in any one place too long, but our path has brought us here for a reason. I must meditate on this. In the meantime, we should rest. Yeah, you go ahead and meditate. As for me, I could use some sleep. Okay, let's rest, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Oh, here we go. Om nom 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 nom. Oh god, the phone is ringing, my meditation is ruined. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's about all we've got time for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, it was pretty dialogue focused, but look! We are on Telos, is that not wonderful? We've finally escaped Paragus. And let's see what Telos brings in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, please do like and subscribe. Um, and hopefully I will speak to you all again soon. Gold Ducat, out.